We had a very interesting club meeting at the South Bay Woodworkers Association last night. A gentleman came in and showed us how to build an ancient mariner's compass. All the parts were laid out and he proceeded to show us exactly how he did it. He built every component of the compass, including a floating gimbal that fit on the inside portion. The tulip wood boxes fit inside of each other. The inside box was the compass that rotated on the gimbal, which would keep it level in the high seas. And as you can see, all the way through to the bottom is another round hole that fit onto a post, which is where the compass would be situated on the ship. All in all, it was a very, very interesting presentation. He talked more about the construction of the compass and what he had to do to build it rather than the actual wood turning. But the components, the, the tulip wood, was the same species of wood that was used in the originals back in the 1500s. And this is what a finished compass looks like with the lid off of it. Oh, this part is interesting. He had to use two pieces of iron brazed together and balanced to perfection for the compass. They're not magnetized to begin with. You rub a piece of lodestone over the iron to magnetize the compass and that makes it a working unit. In the sea, this had to be redone every few days. You had to take the lodestone and rub it back and forth just to keep these pieces of iron magnetized. And at the uh, bottom of the compass where this unit floats, there's a small brass pin and a piece of sheet lead that is put on the bottom that balances it and keeps the, the bottom of this unit um, floating within the, uh, within the gimbals. And in the same meeting, Tom brought in some of his amazing turnings. I am always impressed at the quality of his work. There's a little closer view of it. You can see he's got some laser engraving on the inside. This is a gift for one of his neighbors. And he made the opposite uh, wood. The other one was maple and bloodwood, and this one is primarily bloodwood with uh, maple, uh, maple be meaning the English sycamore. And in the same meeting, my friend Tom brought to me a gift. It's actually a piece of wood that I had sitting around for years that was too big for me to turn. I had started the turning on a friend's lathe, and that no longer became available, so I didn't finish it. And the piece had actually warped, and Tom took it and returned it for me and gifted it to me last night. This is a beautiful piece of highly figured Clara walnut. Well, thanks for watching this little presentation. Talk to you later.